Final four. Each time the winner has taken the title. Pat Summit and Tennessee, the lone number two seed, hopes to shock the world and knock off the undefeated favorite, the Connecticut Huskies. Tonight, the women take center stage, a spot they have truly earned. Spring break, been on the court, not on the beach. Christmas vacation, cut short. Survivor will play for the national championship on Sunday night against Oklahoma. The Sooners eliminated Duke 86-71 with four players in double figures. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Ann Myers. It's great to have you with us. These teams played early in the season. It was a six-point game at the half, but then UConn assumed control and won it by 14. Considering the fact that they lead the nation in just about everything, what can Tennessee to do tonight to pull the upset they really want? They certainly cannot shoot 38% again. They have to attack off the dribble. They've got to get in the lane. They've got to be the aggressors. They've got to be more physical, physical and get themselves to the free throw line. Big rebounding. That's going to be a big key. And the other thing, try and keep the ball out of Sue Bird's hand. Good luck on that one. Nancy Lieberman and Michelle Tafoya will work the sidelines for us. Here's Michelle. Well, Mike, UConn's undefeated. I mean, what haven't they won this season? How about this most recently? An unprecedented All-American sweep, if you will. For the first time in history, four players from one school represented on the first three AP All-America teams. And even Tamika Williams earned honorable mention. Sue Bird, Twin Cass, Diana Taurasi, Asia Jones, all making the team. And while much of the attention has been focused on their offense, how about the defense? Two records could fall this season. NCAA records for field goal percentage defense and fewest points allowed. Even Gino Ariema has said, I didn't think our defense could be this good. Now let's check in with Nancy Lieberman. Well, Michelle, for Tennessee, their mantra for years has been defense, defense, defense. The completion of defense is rebounding. They are unbelievable on the board. They go after it relentless. The thing that I like is that they average 13 and a half offensive rebounds a game. And against a very good UConn team, they're going to have to have those second chance opportunities. Now, for UConn, I think you've got to keep the ball out of the All-American and Player of the Year, Sue Bird's hand. Make Tarasi bring it up the floor. Make Twin Cash bring it up the floor. Keep the ball out of her hands if you can for Tennessee. And then I think you have a chance to win. What do you think, Mike? I think you might be right, Nancy. Pat Summit has been the head coach of Tennessee for 28 years. He's won 788 times, tied for the most ever, including six national championships. Here is her lineup. April McDivitt, the Lady Vols' best three-point shooter. All-American Carol Lawson, their top scorer. Brittany Jackson has started four games, but all in the tournament. Gwen Jackson averages six and a half rebounds. And Michelle Snow at 6-5 gives them an advantage in the middle. Connecticut's Gino Auriemma, the Nate Smith Coach of the Year for the fourth time in his 17, 17 seasons as head coach. He's won two national championships, and here is the Huskies lineup. Sue Bird, a brilliant leader of the National Player of the Year. Second team All-American, Diana Taurasi, the Big East MVP, Swin Cash, the team's leading scorer and rebounder. Tamika Williams hits more than 70% of her shots. And Asia Jones, UConn's all-time in top 10 in rebounds and points. The much-anticipated rematch between the two named programs in women's basketball. It always seems that one of them is here, and more often than not, they win it. Michelle Snow will jump center against Wynn Cash. Tennessee controls. One of the things that Gino Ariema said to me today that he was concerned about the inside play of Michelle Snow and Ashley Robinson if she gets in the game, but good dribble penetration by Brittany Jackson. Brittany Jackson, the freshman who really solidified this lineup, gets the first two points. No freshman nerves there. 
D'Amico Williams with the first opportunity inside for UConn. Tennessee hustles it down court. This is Lawson picked up by Bird. And now McDivitt will reset. Well, how about Cass Summit? 16 different lineups this year in 31 games and 11 of the last 18 games. So she has really struggled. And Michelle Snow has been coming off the bench in the tournament. Didn't play against Notre Dame. Or I think she Georgia State. But she's starting in this game. Can't tell the players without a scorecard, and they will go 11 or 12 deep. Bird nearly turns it over, gets it back, goes baseline. She's shooting more in the tournament, and that's why. She is a terrific shooter. You can go up and down the Connecticut lineup and say, geez, if this girl was the focus of the team, she could average 25 a night, and you'd be right in every case. Well, as you know, Ariana said, she's always had the killer instinct and the drive to win. But Michelle she Snow, it, offensive rebound, Lawson. Lawson struggling from the floor in the last two games. Two of 20 from the floor. And yet she feels that she's confident in her shot. And yet, again, the Tennessee Lady Vols have made it to the Final Four, really, without Carol Lawson in the last two games offensively. But isn't that what shooters do? Shoot? That's right. <laughs> and she does a lot of other things out there. They won't go in unless you shoot. Cash working outside. This is Asia, Asia Jones. And now Sue Bird with a three. Bird, one of the best long-range shooters you'll ever see, 47% on the season. And Tennessee has April McDivitt on her, and she is such a net. And she will harass you and harass you against Vanderbilt. Ashley McElhaney struggled against McDivitt. McDivitt out of the corner, can't hit it. Tarazi, who loves to run with a rebound. Nice pass ahead to Swin Cash. And it was a bullet pass. Yes, it Not was. Not a lofty pass at all. Great hands by Quinn Cash to catch that on the run. Brittany Jackson gives it up to McGivitt. Pat Summit telling her what she wants out of the offense. UConn leads the nation in scoring defense as well as scoring offense. Scoring defense is the best ever, only 51 points a game. Shot clock at one. Brittany Jackson has to fire. Hit the back of the rim, but no closer. Tarazi does a great job of palming the ball and rarely called for it. Hits the runner at the baseline. in her team after they were knocked out of the SEC tournament. I think it was a major shock to them. Sometimes the loss helps you focus, doesn't it? Well, it always does. And it's like when they lost to LSU in the NCC tournament, it brought them back. They needed to work on some things as far as defensively, and they did coming in to the NCAA tournament. They, we talked about the different lineups. Other players have stepped up. You see Lori Morris in the game. And Shira Eli is also in. Moore is a very good ball handler. That pass goes right between her legs. Sue Bird against Lawson, and it's an 8 nothing UConn run. You make a mistake against UConn, you pay for it. They are so good going to the basket and that being under control as far as the layup is, con is concerned. And defense really has a tough time trying to defend it. Moore, excellent pass inside to Jackson, but she couldn't hit the shot. You better make the most of your opportunities against this club. A lot of times, Connecticut won't get as many field goals. Great block by Michelle Snow, and she is pumped. Exceptional defense as Swin Cash spun into a double team, and Snow was there. Here's the block by Michelle Snow. That's her 55th block this season. 
Tarazi very casually inbounds, and Asia Jones with a miss. Snow, the outlet to Lori Moore. Tennessee scored the first bucket. They haven't had one since. Brittany Jackson, good dish inside to Gwen Jackson. There's that dribble penetration. Connecticut road turn, rotating over defensively. And this Gwen Jackson really led team. I think even with Michelle Snow as, as a senior, this Lady Ball team kind of goes as Gwen Jackson goes. Tarazi tried to get it inside. Brittany Jackson, who has had a whale of a start to this game, with the steal, so she's had a bucket and assist in the steal. And Tennessee is going to try and, and stay up with this Connecticut team. Connecticut runs in a different way than Ten Tennessee does. But Tennessee scores more off their running. Moore trying to get the bounce pass to Snow, and it goes out of bounds. 15-25 to go first half. 8-4, UConn. Women in Sports Weekend coming in June. The Ball Championship is brought to you by Sports Center. Which Sports Center do you watch? Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. Beautiful river walk. Full of shops and attractions. The attraction right now is at the Alamo Dome with UConn leading Tennessee 8-4. Tennessee has already had an 8-0 run in this game. Asia Jones into the lane, 13 footer. They all shoot so well. Moore hustling back down court, picked up by Bird. They shoot so well. How about getting Old Dominion in their last game to get here to the final four? They were 13 of 13 in the first two, three minutes. It's a way to take a team out of it in a hurry, isn't it? Shooting 100%. And then, you know, about 12 minutes in, 10 minutes in, then they're shooting 90%. But somebody missed one. There's Sue Bird on a layup. Gwen Jackson against the double team to Lawson, who has struggled so much with the shot. That may have been partially tipped. Then Lawson misses the wide open follow. I got a block shot by Sue Bird. Bird cut off by Moore. She and Tarazi both have that great hesitation dribble. There's the bucket by Tamika Williams and a foul on top of it. They do. It just has it, it makes the defense stop for a split second. The thing that impresses me most in the offense is the spacing. Good quick passes, they're short passes, and they're, they're great angles. That's a high low. A Tamika Williams down on the low, Asia Jones passing her from the top. But they can rotate it with the three players that they have with Jones, Williams, and Cash. Gwen Jackson has picked up her second quick foul. And Tamika Williams, another Naismith candidate, will go to the free throw line. Hits the basket. All five starters have scored for UConn. And it's 13 to 4. Full court pressure. Lawson. Tennessee had numbers, but Lawson threw it away. Connecticut has not pressed a lot this year. They haven't had to. But you see the reaction by the Tennessee players just rushing things and Pat Lovett not happy with the way her players handle that press. Sometimes that's so much more effective when you don't do it very often for whatever reason. And spring and autumn is a surprise. Asia Jones had a good look but missed the shot. The rebound went to Shira Eli. And she was fouled. The call will go against Swin Cash, her first. Tennessee has gotten its opportunities early, but failed to cash in. They're down 13-4. They hit only two shots in 11 attempts. I asked how someone, I said, what do you have to do differently? And she said, we've got to guard them. Well, they not only have to guard Connecticut because they shoot so well, they've got to get some shots to go down for themselves. Asia Jones gets it back to Bird. Look at their passes. Their passes just have that zip on them. Three-second call. UConn will turn it over. Pat Summit had one of the three undefeated national championship teams in the history of this game. Gino Oriana has had one going for his second this weekend. Brittany Jackson got a nice screen from Snow. Good pass inside to Eli. And Brittany Jackson is a remarkable 
story for Tennessee, a very poised freshman who has just gotten into the starting lineup lately and made a lot out of it. Out of Cleveland, Tennessee, and again, the dribble penetration, opening things up, good pass inside to the freshman Eli. And Shira Eli in the SEC tournament had 31 points, so she's capable of putting a lot of points on the board for them. She made the all-regional team. Third, good pass to Asia Jones. Her shot rims out. Rebound to Tamika Williams, and Tamika Williams calls for the offensive foul, trying to get the follow. Shira Eli getting down, getting position. You see the contact by... Tamika Williams. Williams kind of shook her head up and down, yeah. Moore brings it up. When you talk about Brittany Johnson, Jackson being inserted into this lineup in that number three spot. Cal Summit tried when Jackson at that three, but she's a lot more comfortable at the four, and Jackson can shoot the three. Brittany. She has supplied most of the offensive fireworks for Tennessee. They've cut it to 13 to nine. But UConn has an immediate answer with Stu Bird out of the corner. She drains one at 16 nine. UConn playing zone right now. Oh, that was a tough pass. McDivitt tried to fit that one in there. Bird back the other way, short on her jumper. McDivitt with a loose ball. She missed it, but you and I have talked, and as long as we've seen Sue Bird play, she can stop on a dime. Boy, she can. She's got that fifth gear, too, when she gets in the open court. So does Tarazi. Oh, what a pass inside. Nice pass by Tarazi, but Swin Cash had trouble handling it. They bail her out with a foul, though. I also like those Sue Bird out on the wing, opening things up, but she had her head turned back looking for the ball and hands up ready to receive a pass even though she didn't receive it two fouls on tasha butts quickly off the uh, tennessee bench sue bird the player of the year in almost every category what that was too easy way too easy how do you run an out-of-bounds play like that and be that open and i've never seen a player like tarazi hold the ball in one hand on out-of-bounds play he's got those big hands those long arms no was open. I don't think realized it for a moment. Tarazi with a rebound. Out to Bird. Two on two. Bird goes low to swing cash. He missed. Follow won't go. And the rebound to Tasha Butts. Connecticut just gives themselves chances. They're all around the ball. The offensive glass. Second, third opportunity. And they seem to play with such intensity on every single play. And you never see another team like this with the four seniors and a super soft Diana Crossy. Eli tries to go inside, lost it. Look at hustle by Bird. The player of the year diving out of bounds, trying to save the ball. Two wonderful guards, which is what you need in tournament play. People can snap off those beautiful passes. Get up 18-9 here in San Antonio, and Tennessee is here at the Final Four, but they've been struggling a little bit tonight because Kara Lawson's been struggling throughout the tournament, scoreless so far in this game. Pat Summit told me earlier that Kara has carried the season, the team all season long, and it's actually taken a toll on her. So Summit put together a highlight reel on the good things Lawson's been doing, defense, rebounding, and she showed it to Lawson earlier today. Summit said Kara needs to see some good stuff. We'll see if she can respond here, Mike. All right, Michelle, thanks very much. Only three seconds on the shot clock. They get it into Munoz, who comes in for the first time. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Excellent defense by Tennessee, or a check of Connecticut to shut down Tennessee. Well, we had seen in the second round, and there you see Carol Lawson coming off the bench, Pat Summit directing her what to do, but in that second round game with Iowa, they had eight block shots in the first half. And played much better defense in the, deep, uh, in the second half and only had one block. There isn't anything I don't think they can do. An excellent entry pass that time and a wide open bucket for Jessica Moore, the red shirt freshman. And it's 20 to 9. And Munoz double dribble. Back in the 
Diana Crossy again over her head at six foot. She's able to see over the defense, and Connecticut does a good job cutting underneath the basket or in front of the basket, just getting good position. Crossy already with four of six. And they catch the ball so well. Very good hands up and down this roster. And that's the hard part, too. We talked about keeping the ball out of Sue Burr's hands. Well, she's fine with that because everybody else steps up. Great hustle play by McDivitt to dive for that ball. And we've got a foul on Tarazi, and Gino Oriama really upset by that call. He thought it was a jump. He's talking to the NCAA committee over there. <laughs> they Please can't the help. Case. I know it. Eli, nice stick. The basket and the foul. Richardson able to score off the good feed. This is a very young Tennessee team, even though they're very deep. Good penetration by Eli, and the nice pass. Good hands by Courtney McDaniel. She has been a superstar in the last four or five games for this Tennessee team. She's really made a difference. Doesn't get a lot of minutes, but when she comes in, she'll get a big rebound. She makes a defensive play. And so when she plays in those short minutes first, she's an effective player. One of those remarkably productive people. And Tarazi she, penetrated. She ended up being triple C. And just even off that, Tennessee going to the board. You saw three orange jerseys. Lawson kicks it back out to McDivitt. Munoz is in the game. Her dad, Anthony, may have been the best offensive lineman that ever played professional football. There's a follow by Shira Eli again, and here come the balls down 20 to 13. And you wonder if the Huskies will make some adjustments on the defensive end as far as denying that penetration. Maybe make Tennessee take some outside shots. Put the ball on the floor, but make them pull up. Last foul was called against Munoz. That'll be her first. And the 15 foul against Tennessee. In pass, Summit did not care for that call. Tarazi, a one-handed bullet pass, a little behind. Bird, bodies fly. Tennessee on the fast break, and the lay-in is good by Eli. The lady ball. In danger of being blown out early, have cut the lead to five. What kind of response you want to see from your team? They came out on fire out of the last time out. Carol Lawson was inserted in the lineup, Courtney McDaniel, and they just seemed to turn it up a notch. Rossi, you talked about the one hand, and it's not a bad pass, and said she misses Sue Bird off the cut. She doesn't go to the right enough, it's behind her, and Tennessee comes up with the new ball. So Sue Bird should not get the turnover off that play. Nothing. Tennessee run. Eli and McDaniel had been big off the bench. Eli had been starting in the pivot. Tonight they go back to the senior Michelle Snow. And Snow listening to Pat Summit. I remember the closest game this season that Connecticut has had was at Virginia Tech, where they only won by nine, 59 to 50. Their average win, 36 and a half points a game. It's not a misprint. The average win, 36 and a half points a game. Cash lost it, but there will be a foul. We're in San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas, where Tennessee is playing UConn. Mike Patrick, Ann Myers, Michelle Tafoya, Nancy Lieberman, glad you could join us for the second semifinal. Oklahoma has already advanced to the national championship game on Sunday night. Last foul was on McDivitt. That was the sixth team foul against Tennessee. Asia Jones off the inbound play, can't hit it. Good block at inside by Tennessee, and McDivitt at 5'8", gets the rebound. And Tennessee pushing the ball up the floor, keeping it up-tempo. Munoz, offensive rebound, blocked from behind. Loose ball out of bounds, last touch by UConn. I think on these tight calls, these coaches are playing to the NCAA committee over there. <laughs> it's both sides. 
Ashley Robinson, a 6'5 sophomore, number 33, checks in. McDaniel will go out. Tennessee with a lot of size, a lot of depth. Robinson leans in, couldn't hit the shot over Asia Jones, who got the rebound. Bird for three. Just killer shot. The dagger. Ten for Sue Bird. long to have a player like that that wants the shot to cut the momentum not only wants the shot the ability to make it in the last three games it's getting better and better and better off each shot good defense too outstanding defense right in the face of Lawson as she worked her way across the lane for the jumper Conlon comes in for UConn an excellent backup point guard Little scoop shot by Williams. Knocked out of bounds, and they've got a foul call. Uh, and passed someone really hot about that one. Ashley Robinson at 6-5. Connecticut gets the ball inside. And Robinson looked like she came up with a good block. It did. But not in the eyes of the officials. Williams will go to the line. The first time these teams made, she had 13 points and 15 rebounds. Williams worked so hard. Not a very good free throw shooter, but tough from the floor. Looks like it's all balls. There's a lot of body there. That's probably what they called was from behind. And you can see the reaction of Ashley Robinson looking at the official on the other side. Tamika Williams and her teammates, the little uh, smile with each other because she banked in the first free throw. She's only 64% from the line. And from the floor? She's 70.2%. 70 and she's not listed as the best field goal percenter shooter in the country because she doesn't take enough shots. Not enough attempts. If I shot 70% and shoot every one of them. 24 15. And that distinction went to Angie Welly of Iowa State and Chantel Anderson of Vanderbilt. Robinson with a runner. Good defense by Asia Jones. Bird head up all the way. I just really love how Connecticut gets their guards out on the wings and clearing things out for the fast break. Cash. That was a pass. Got it over to Asia Jones. She'll get credit for it. Could have been a block. Jackson. Can't hit this one. Lawson tipped it outside to herself and then gives it back to Lori Moore. Well, that's just it. The Huskies are a team that they score off the passes because they pass so much and again you'd mentioned from everybody it gets contagious one and done for tennessee bird gets it down to cash back into the lane back to Asia jones she can't hit look at bird's hands the footwork to get that ball and the balance itself behind the back dribble to get away from robinson Asia Jones, turnaround jump shot. She's had a tough shooting night. And we've got a jump ball situation. Possession arrow will give it to Tennessee. Sue Bird, the National Player of the Year, has come out firing early. She's already in double digits. And UConn hitting it all cylinders. They're up by 11. Antonio, UConn up 11 over Tennessee. For Tennessee to be successful in this basketball team and be competitive, these are the things they have to do against the UConn defense. That time Jackson penetrates, draws, makes the defense rotate. They can create some points off of turnovers and then get into transition as Eli is able to finish here. I also think the other way Tennessee can be successful if they attack and get to the foul line and get some easy points, Mike. And Nancy, the other thing they're going to have to do is get Kara Lawson for shooting touchback. Moore brings it up against Tarazi. Good crossover dribble to get inside and score. The freshman taking the sophomore to school. That was a pretty sweet scoop shot. Yes, it was. And she has started quite a bit this season, coming off the bench now towards the end of the stretch, going in the tournament. But Lori 
Moore feels a little bit more comfortable, feels that she can set things up watching from the bench. Asia Jones has averaged 16 points a game in the NCAA tournament. Is up by 11, and that's an offensive foul on Eli. Shira Eli trying to make the good move inside. And you see Asia Jones coming over defensively again. This Connecticut team is so strong in the shots that they force you to take, the shots that they make you think about taking. And it takes a little bit of courage to stand in there when someone comes flying in with one knee up. You know you're going to get a whack. 28-17. Tarazi. She had such a miserable shooting effort in the final four a year ago. It's got to feel great for her. Probably one of the best things that ever happened to her is that game. And we saw a previous game, Elena Beard, having a similar type feeling. And again, that Duke team, a very young team, and they will all be back except one senior. How would you know that's good? You never had a bad oh, shooting night. Yeah. <laughs> that was so long ago. 31-17. They're all good days now. <laughs> Every day's a holiday. Bird, excellent movement without the ball to get it back. Then she misses the three. And the long rebound kicks directly to Pat Summit, who's going to hang on to the ball to get a couple of comments in. <laughs> Well, Pat Summit, as we saw in practice yesterday, was still seething about the number two seed. Oh, wasn't she? And that has been, I think, a terrific motivator for not only her, but her team. More so her, as far as to get to the Final Four. Jackson penetrates, swings through a double team. Almost taken away from behind by Lori Moore. It was funny the way she put it. She said, I don't know if it's inspired by players, but it sure inspired me. <laughs> Sunday night, we'll be back here at the Alamo Dome for the national championship. The night starts at 8 for the 2002 Women's NCAA Championship preview. Then at 8.30, the national championship game right here on ESPN, your exclusive home for women's basketball. Tarazi doesn't get the roll. UConn's gone a little cold from the floor. Can Tennessee take advantage? Lawson, nice move to go straight down the lane. The first bucket tonight for Lawson. You really have to admire how the Lady Bulls are being so aggressive. And then Tarasi knocking down the three, just kind of stopping that break. And two, it's, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say two out of three for long range from Tarasi. Well, I think an advantage, too, in this big dome, the crowd has been unbelievably supportive for Connecticut. Talked to Gino Oriema and he was saying, we've been able to sell more tickets to our fans. And yesterday at the shoot-around, at practice, they had a standing ovation coming in. They had a ton of people here really enjoying it. Great ball control by Bird. And a foul away from the ball. They're going to turn it over, calling on Asia Jones. Offensive foul to Rossi from outside. Two out of three bombs for UConn. My team here in San Antonio. And coming into this game, Tennessee head coach Pat Summit told her team, Gina Oriana is Steve Spurrier, and the UConn Huskies are Florida. It can be third and seven at the 50-yard line, and he's going to go for the end zone. They're going to try to beat you long. So what we want to do is shorten the field. They're going to stretch the defense. We want to make them grind it out. She, she drew the, the parallel to making a football team run rather than throw down the field. But so far, Mike and Annie, UConn's been able to throw it down the field. Yes, they have, and very successfully, perhaps uh, better than Steve Spurrier will be able to at his new destination with the Redskins. Tennessee continuing to struggle 28% from the floor. Jackson, there's another double team. Connecticut does so well with that. Jackson keeps the ball alive, though, and Eli comes out with it. Shot clock is down to seven. McDivitt, she knows the shot clock's running down. She just can't get the shot. Lawson, offensive rebound, and Lawson with a scoop shot that won't go, but she'll get the foul. 
Nancy Lieberman, you were close to Pat Summit that last time out. Did you hear what she said? Oh, I heard it loud and clear, Mike. She said, my biggest disappointment is your lack of competitive spirit. And she looked everybody in the eye and she said, and you know what? You don't want to fly home with me if you don't get it. And you know what? I was a little nervous walking out of the huddle. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, she is a competitor. There is no doubt about that. She settled for nothing less than the best from herself as well as everybody around her. And that's what success is all about. And what happens with this UConn team is you get shell shocked. If you're not knocking down shots in a row, I mean, you can hit your first one shot. That helps you a lot. But then from there, you still got to attack. And I, I think that Tennessee has come out pretty good, especially in this timeout. Carol Lawson looking to go inside, and Tennessee continuing to try and drive the ball down low. Shiraz in that last possession may have made one too many passes. This one's tipped out of bounds. But it's out to the uh, Lady Vols with 2.33 to go for a half. And that's one thing Gino Ariama has talked about this year as far as Diana Cross. Is she's learned a lot this year, but he feels that she might overpass. But next year, he's looking for her to score a few more points. Bird with a reach in, knocks it away. Great hands. The player of the year can do absolutely everything on a basketball court. She is brilliant. It's just how she leads this team. They've got, they're under such control. When things go wrong, she has the poise to bring in the lane. Tough runner from Tarazi. Ran around a series of screens. Finally got the shot she wanted. She has 10. And the lead is 16. Biggest to the ball game. Now, what hands by Tarazi to knock it away? Eli had two blocks, and Tennessee just keeps working on the board. They really are. They're working to get inside, but, man, you got those hands flying, those bodies flying with the Huskies. I mean, they know how to block shots. Bird gave it up, got it right back. Good entry pass, and we've got a foul inside of Swin Cash. Work to get position. Mike Gino Ariana has told us that Diana Cross and Sue Bird remind him of Jerry West and Gail Goodrich. Well, that's a pretty nice pull-up, like a Jerry West shot. Not bad. Says, although sometimes she plays like Mae West. <laughs> Much more Jerry than Mae. And you know, if you mention Jerry West, you get my attention Well, exactly. Well, that one, she went left. They used to say West couldn't go left. Who cares? Never had to. Couldn't stop them. That's true. <laughs> 36-22. Jackson with a rebound. Entering the final minute and a half of the first 20. Fully 14. Well, there's a good fake by Brittany Jackson to draw the foul on Bird, who went down hard. First foul on Sue Bird. And Tennessee will now have a chance to go to the line for a one-on-one. You know, Ariana being named Coach of the Year. Fourth time he's won the Naismith Award. And the WBCA. Exactly. From both. Jackson at the line. Her mother was a brilliant college basketball player at Middle Tennessee State. In and out on the second one. What an aggressive rebound by Asia Jones. And she wasn't snap that one off. Asia Jones is so versatile. And Gino Ariana thinks that she makes it to the next level at the pro level that she has as good a career, or not better, than the other front line players. Number 11 all-time scorer. Number 9 all-time rebounder. Bird missed out of the corner. And a foul underneath. It will go Tennessee's way. You know, in practices, the NCAA tournament, Gino R.M. has talked to his kids, and we've, we've seen some of their practices where they, their three-point shoot is, is incredible, the, the discipline that they have in certain drills. And he says, when you get to the tournament, balls start falling a little short, and you've really got to use the legs, you've really got to extend. And they run these drills over and over off those three-point shooters, and you can see the face when Super miss that three-point shot. Is that kind of a thing? Yeah. He's missing. Well, you saw the backcourt comparison just dominated by UConn. Under a minute to go, first half. The lead at 13. Tennessee is so good, this is usually when they stick the knife in. Just to finish it off. Oh, what a pass. 
burned to Jones. That was incredible. Well, McDivitt got kicked off. They had to make the switch. And when Sue Bird stopped down off the baseline, Jones just rolled to the basket, had the mismatch. And great presence of mind by Sue Bird. Marriott halftime report coming up with Robin Vera and Nell. Blocked by Swin Tag. Sue Bird wasn't the player of the year for nothing. Little pump fake right there. Draw the defense up in the air, open everything up down low. No matter how small the opening, she seems to find a way to get it through. Lawson trying to inbound, gets it to McDivitt. Knocked out of bounds by Conlon. Carol Lawson keeps wiping her nose. She must have gotten banged pretty good. Thirty-eight twenty-three. Snow, that's the easy way to get the ball in for Tennessee. Jackson, double clutch, couldn't hit it. Taken away by McDaniel. And McDaniel has had a pretty good game off the bench. Makes it 38-25. Bird looking for the last shot. Tarazi for three. So the half at least ends on a high note for Tennessee as they cut the lead to 13. But they are still down to undefeated Connecticut. Let's go to Michelle. She's with Gino. All right, obviously having uh, audio problems with Gino. We will attempt to get through these comments a little bit later. But at the half, it is 38-25. UConn going for it. 38th in a row. Let's go back to Robin. Mike, thank you very much. As always, joined again by Neil Fortner and Vera Jones. If you remember, a year ago in the national semifinals against Notre Dame, Diana Taurasi, just a freshman at the time, one of 15, showing no ill effect in this national semifinals. Absolutely not. She seems right at home in the Alamo Dome, that's for sure. Her and Bird have combined for 20 points. They are playing very, very well, but she's hitting some big shots. But what I like the most is they spread the floor so wide, giving their post players high percentage shots, and they're shooting 52%. Well, you talk about Bird and Tarasi. We've talked about this backcourt forever, and I think Sue Bird, obviously, she keeps stepping up over and over again in the big clutch moments. It's not so much how much she scores, but when she scores it, she is the backbreaker in terms of momentum. Every time Tennessee looked like they were about to pull away or come back within uh, fighting range, there was Sue Bird once again knocking down another three. At one point, they got within five points of Tennessee, and what happened? Sue Bird hits a big three, and they're off and running. All right, Coach Cole from Oklahoma is here to talk with us at the half. We're going to show you how her Sooners made it to Sunday's championship game with a win over Duke in our first semifinal. Highlights when we come back. by a score of 38 to 25 at the break. This is our second game. Hope you're with us. For the first one, we have a very special guest, the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Sherry Cole, who on Sunday will be playing in their first national championship game. Congratulations, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let's see how you got there. Let's uh, see a few highlights in that first game against Duke tonight. Deanna Jackson with the steal. Going coast to coast, Oklahoma led at that point 40 to 28. But early in the second half, Oklahoma was up 11. Then Roslyn Roth, what a game for her, makes a long jumper to keep Oklahoma ahead. And then in the second half, Duke trailing by 14. Isis Tillis really woke up in this game. Duke down by 12. And then later, Elena Beard gets down low, passes to Michelle Matasovsky for the jumper. Duke closes to within two. But then, Sherry, tell us about Roslyn Roth. Pardon me? Tell us a little bit about Roslyn oh, Roth. the toughest kid I've ever coached, without a doubt. You know, she's got one leg, Robin. I, no ACL. No ACL. So she's playing on one leg and uh, comes from a tough neighborhood, a terrific kid who has infused our team with a degree of trust that we didn't even know existed before she got there. And then you have players like Stacey Dales, who are a senior, who's a senior, and you win 86 to 71 to advance to the championship game on Sunday, winning the winner between Connecticut 
and Tennessee. And it's hard to believe that six years ago you were playing for a state high school title six years ago, and now you're going to be playing for a national championship. A little yeah, bit different. It, it's unbelievable. You know, though, we won that, hate, that state high school championship, so maybe that means we're going to win this college national championship. A few more TV cameras here tonight and a whole lot more people. I tell you what, Sherry, I want to talk about your half-court offense in the second half because I thought it was really, really good. You really moved the ball well side to side, got a lot of confidence, good shots, and your, then your break started really kicking in. You know, that's sort of been our signature, I think. What we do is we play well together, and our shots fall when we make passes that lead to great shots. And I'm always telling them the quality of your passing affects the quality of our shooting percentage, and we know. I mean, everybody on the floor knows, everybody on the bench knows. When we make that extra pass to get somebody open, the shot's going in the basket. And and then when that happens, you get a little more juice, you have a little more spring in your step, you play better defensively. That leads into transition, which gives you a cushion, which makes those shots even easier to make. Excellent. The thing that, that, that got me the most is I think your team is a lot more balanced than it's given credit for. We spent a lot of time talking about Caulfield and Dale, but Roslyn Ross tonight stepping up, and this isn't the first time she stepped up as a leading scorer. Caden Hill, she's done it six or seven times this season. Can you talk a little bit about your supporting cast? so to speak, and how balanced your team really is. Well, I've said all along, all season long, that it's the number of really good players that we have that make us difficult to defend. And everybody wants to talk about Stacy, and Lord only knows I do too. She's the most special kid I've ever been uh, associated with in my life. And then if they don't talk about Stacy, they're talking about Nisha, and how in the world can you find a better kid than Nisha Caulfield? But how about Roslyn and Kaden and Deanna Jackson? And Jamie Talbert scores our first three baskets of the game, and nobody ever talks about yeah. Jamie, mm -hmm. undersized post player from Elkhart, Kansas. I know, it's been very poised. I mean, a little jittery to begin with, but didn't really found your poise. It's a 14-point lead right now for the Connecticut Huskies. If they should get by the Lady Vols and play you on Sunday, you've already played them one time this year. Does that help that you've been on the court with them before? Oh, I think it's a tremendous advantage because we realize we went to Hartford, although we weren't playing in stores. Hartford might as well be stores. They play there as much as they do at home. Uh, you play in front of all those Connecticut fans, and yet there were four minutes to go in the game. We were only down four, and I had Stacey Dale sitting by me for most of the second half. So our guys came away from that game thinking, you know what, that wasn't our A game, and we still had a shot. So I think sort of uh, maybe the mystique has been broken down a little bit. How about the mystique of your Oklahoma men's team? This is great. I hope they were watching you tonight. <laughs> I hope they were, too. Yeah, and now they're going to play Indiana tomorrow. You know, we left uh, Coach Sampson a voicemail. I know the team's in a team meeting tonight because that's how he operates, but we called his cell phone, left a voicemail, and yelled, it's your turn, baby. <laughs> All right, Sherry. Um, Sherry, I've got to say this because normally at this time of the year, your voice is so hoarse. <laughs> right. that you, we can't even understand you. And now, so this group must be much easier to coach. You don't have a reason to yell so much. Either that or I just went on a mission after Robin busted on me last year at the selection show. So I just, I've been taking care of it, drinking a lot of water. Maybe it's my giving up Mountain Dew. Hey! Are you trying to get some ad time here? A little Brenda Vaccaro act with his little husky talk. It's Kate Hill. Love the way she does the imitation. Sherry, congratulations. Thank you very much. We will see you on Sunday. We still got Thank the you. second half between Connecticut and Tennessee to decide who will play the Sooners in Sunday's championship game. So come on back. Connecticut with a 13-point lead over Tennessee. What are we going to see in the second half? UConn does not want this game to get any closer. They're going to come out and put the hammer down as fast as they can. Tennessee's got to keep going inside. They had 11 offensive rebounds, but they kept missing the chippies and shooting 28%, but keep going inside. 20 minutes of the side. Who's going to move on and face Oklahoma in Sunday's title game? Diana Taurasi and Sue Bird. 20 of Connecticut's 38 first-half points. The second half, straight ahead. Come on back. me, I will be a hero. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the culmination of all the dreams and hopes of every little girl. Only the players who trade selfish or selfless become a team. This is who I am. In San Antonio, Texas, where UConn is leading Tennessee. 38-25 at the half. Tennessee shooting only 49 or 29% from the floor. UConn 48. They've hit four out of eight three-point shots. And the backcourt dominating 20 to 5. Let's go to Michelle with Pat Summit. Two one. Pat down 13 that is with a team that's hard to play catch up with. What'd you say to your team in the locker room? I said Notre Dame was down 19 last year. We cannot continue to play the way we're playing and we've got to get much more inspired 
particularly in our post game. I think their post people are just absolutely beating our post people to loose balls. Obviously, we're having a lot of difficulty with our post defense, and we got to continue to go inside and keep them from going inside. Thanks, Coach. Bird, Tarazi, and Jones, each 10 points apiece in the first half. Kara Lawson's shooting struggles continue. She was only two out of seven from the floor after a two for 20 performance last weekend. And Gwen Jackson coming off a big game against Vanderbilt, 18 points and 12 rebounds. Two fouls in that first half, played five minutes. She had two points, only one basket and no rebounds. Every player in UConn's starting lineup was a first, second, third, or honorable mention All-American by the Associated Press. It's never happened before, and they all earned it. Jones leans in. Loose ball, Sue Bird. She has a dozen in the least 15. And there's the loose ball that Pat Summit was talking about. And Sue Bird gets the ball and calls timeout. Another turnover. Tennessee digging itself an enormous hole. Women in Sports Weekend coming in June. San Antonio, where Connecticut has a 15-point lead over Tennessee. Here's the reason why. Look at this. You got one Tennessee player here, here, and right here in the middle, right? They want to get the ball in. Tennessee is doing too much standing around and not relocating. So it's easy for them to guard. Even when they pass the ball in, stop it right there. You've got one defender, two defenders, three defenders. Look, you've got four UConn players around the passer. Not a lot of passing angles. And when they do kick it out, they're standing and they're out of shooting range. And they've got to turn it around in a hurry, Nancy, down by 15 against the team whose closest game this year was nine points. Tarazi trying to make the cut, and she's held as she does to foul on Lori Moore. And you had mentioned they'd beaten their opponents by more than 30 points, average-wise. And Junior Ariama has given his bench a lot of playing time. He has not left his starters in for the whole game. Can you think how much more they could beat teams or how many more points they could score? Exactly. Kara Lawson picks up that foul on the block. The other thing about Gino Oriema, everybody says, well, he's got more talent than everybody. He ought to win. We have seen that so many times. The most talented team doesn't necessarily win. No. Not at all. It's how well you play together. And this Connecticut team, again, because of what has happened in the past, what happened last year as far as the injuries, with Shea Ralph and Stavano Abrasimova. Right. And how they shot in the semifinal game when they won the championship as them all being sophomores and seniors now. They've gone through a lot. Sue Bird, the ACL chair, and they've come together. It's about chemistry. And a lot of teams in this country have had chemistry, and they've had good programs, and they will continue to thrive. But Connecticut is stepping out of that group. Now, the officials uh, made a mistake on that last foul call. The call should have gone against Carol Lawson. They gave it to Gwen Jackson, which would be her third. And Lawson was obviously the one who was blocking Sally Bell, Lawson, Newton, and Angie Lewis, the officials. And if I'm Gwen Jackson, I know I'm saying something. If you're a junior, you're one of the top players on this team, a lot of expectations, I would be saying something to the officials. Are you sure? Well, it would be her third. And Pat Summit goes over to check, and they have now given it back to the proper person, Larson. Which is her first. Exactly, and only two on Jackson. Turnover there on Gwen Jackson. Bird on the run. That steal by Sue Bird reminded me a lot of a European-type steal. Gino Ariema coached the Junior World Championship team, and the Europeans have to come from behind to steal the ball. Lawson with a miss, Snow with a follow, Snow with another follow. And Michelle Snow used her 6'5 frame to good advantage that time, but that's her first bucket. Her first basket, she averages almost 13 points a game. Good pick inside to get Asia Jones free. Excellent teamwork by tennis or by uh, UConn. Snow back the other way, fouled by Tarazi. You got to like how Tennessee, though, as soon as a made basket, they're getting out quickly. They're still trying to 
keep the up tempo and, and force Connecticut to get back on that defense. Hopefully that they can score in transition rather than setting up in that half court game. First time these teams met, UConn won by 14 after a six point halftime lead. Tonight, the lead at the half was 13 for UConn. It's now up to 17 and Michelle Snow goes to the free throw line. The senior from Pensacola, Florida. And Tasha Butts went to her recently and said, you know, we really feed off of you. You've got to be the one who leads us, the one who gives us that emotional presence inside. So we're going to hitch our wagon to your star, and you've got to pull it. Well, she's a senior that really has to step up. She did not play in the Georgia State game because of discipline reasons. She missed a class. Then she missed the first eight minutes. That son of came had her come off the bench against Notre Dame. She had 11 points in that game, struggled to get to BYU, and then Tasha Butts came and said, you're our leader. Well, she hit three key shots down the stretch to beat Vanderbilt. Another great entry pass to Asia Jones as she got away from Brittany Jackson. UConn so efficient offensively. Gwen Jackson wheels into the lane, double team, had the ball knocked away, stolen by Bird. Swim cash and a poor pass that Asia Jones couldn't handle. Well, you have to like the effort as far as it's trying to come together, but it didn't come all together. On the other side, look at the spacing, look at the angle as far as trying to get that bounce pass into Asia Jones. Even though there were three orange jerseys, wasn't a lot of aggressive pressure on the perimeter pass to be able to not deny that ball getting in. UConn showing a zone and a trap. More. Excellent pass to the baseline, and Gwen Jackson hits the jumper. Heads up play by Lori Moore, recognizing the 2-3 zone, splitting it right off the bat, getting down the lane, and defense collapsing, she made the nice pass. Moore, an excellent freshman point guard. Cash spins in the foul. That time, Lori Moore just got caught out of position with the spin move that Cash had. Second foul on Moore. And Cash will go to the free throw line. The number eight all-time scorer for UConn's program out of McKeesport, Pennsylvania, and won the Swing Forward Award last night from ESPN the Magazine as the best swing forward in the country. Hey, they have an award for everything today. Don't I, they? And, and everybody's giving an award. And if you're UConn, you have to back up a couple of trailers just to hold this year's edition. <laughs> Got that line drive kind of shot. Very little margin for error. Makes them both, however, in a 48-31. Jackson trying to do something one-on-one, -on -one, leans in and draws the foul. Good play by the freshman. You can see how Connecticut is playing very aggressive when they're in the man-to-man -man defense. Tennessee trying to be a little bit more patient in the second half to execute coming off those picks. Tamika Williams picked up her second personal. Jackson from Cleveland, Tennessee. How unusual is it for a freshman to get the first five starts of her college career all in the NCAA tournament. And she's made a difference. She really has. And just the confidence that Cat Summit has given her a lot of, again, a, lot, a young team, a lot of players have come off the bench to contribute, and she's just tried to find that right chemistry. Jones in the lane, short on the jump shot. Lawson, boy, what they wouldn't do to see Lawson hit a couple of bombs. Moore dishes it outside. Snow with a miss. And Bird with a rebound. As much as Tennessee wants to run, they've got to be able to knock some shots down because Connecticut is just good. If you want to keep running with them. And that foul is going to be on Michelle Snow. And Snow and Jackson are really upset about it as this past summit. Well, it looked like just all the players were going up for the ball. Not much contact, but they called it on snow and just kind of stopped the momentum for Tennessee again. Tough call against her. It's her first. 
Good catch by Swin Cash. Bird left open. Deadly. Lauren Moore for one split second helped out on the post. And as soon as that happened, Swin Cash with a nice pass outside. And we talked about everybody contributing off the passes. It's the biggest lead of the ball game. And Michelle Snow didn't make a whole lot of effort at that poor bounce pass by Moore. And Pat Summit can see it slipping away. Michelle Snow, the emotions grinding for the Lady Balls. 61-33 Connecticut with its largest lead of the game going for 38 in a row led by the player of the year, Sue Bird. 15 points, five assists. Just your typical night at the office for the senior. And her mom, Nancy, here tonight, just enjoying every second of it. Tennessee dropping into their zone defense. Bird and Tarazi, such good outside shooters against zones. Well, they're so patient in zone, too. Oh, what a great pass. Because Tamika Williams gets the pass in the post. A little no-look behind her. Then Bird steals it from Lawson at the other end. Bird to the baseline, no look. Asia Jones in the lane. The route may be on, 55 to 33. Have you ever seen so many bounce passes and get there? And perfect. There's a reason they lead the nation in scoring offense and scoring defense. One of them is her daughter. And it's not just on the offensive end. She comes up with big steals, too. No look pass. Again, the great guard can see where things are going. And Asia Jones with a nice bounce pass inside. Tamika Williams with the back bounce pass to Diana Crossy. And Sue Bird, the leader of this team, continuing to inspire her teammates. Let's go to Michelle. Well, I'm joined now with, with by Nancy Bird. And every single game that you've seen and every single game that the nation has seen UConn play, they seem to overcome any problems that get in the way. Has this almost seemed too easy, too good to be true? Well, it certainly is wonderful, but I don't think it's too good to be true. And it's certainly not easy. These girls work very hard in practice every day and on the floor. Can you think back years ago when Sue was just a kid playing ball? And did you ever imagine that she would become the player that she is now and, and the honors that she would collect at Connecticut? No, I didn't think that. Obviously, she, she deserves everything she gets, but it wasn't one of those things. I just thought Sue liked to play ball. She worked very hard. She's certainly talented, but I'm most proud of her because of her worth as her work ethic. She just is a great kid. She's worked real hard, and it just complements her talent. People say that when her turning point was after the injury of her freshman year. She came back as a sophomore, and she was reading and hearing, boy, UConn's not going to have a true point guard, and she rose to the challenge. Can you talk about what was going through her mind at that time? She was really a very upset, obviously, but I think that it gave her a determination that perhaps she would not have had. It's hard to say, but she knew. She tasted it. She wanted it, and she was sitting on the bench. She knew what it took to win. She talked to the coaches. She rehabbed. She was a great rehabber. I mean, she just, she knew she wanted it, and I think it gave her the, the impetus to go on and really do well. And they're doing pretty well, Mike. Back to you. They're doing incredibly well. Tarasi with a miss but a fresh 30 for UConn. And did you see the sequence where Sue Bird fed a perfect pass to Tamika Williams, yeah. but she lost control of it, and Bird pretended to be angry and walked up and looked like she was going to kick her. They're all such good friends, but again, it was a bounce pass, another bounce pass. Tarazi with a miss, another <laughs> offensive rebound, and a foul as Tamika Williams controlling the glass. The Huskies have been relentless on this series on the offensive board. Do you know where I am? It told me today. I asked him how to compare Jen Rosati, who was the one guard Sue Bird replaced, who was just a fierce player. Sure was. And competitive. Both have the competitiveness that he talked about. He felt that Jen Rosati was a little bit more physical, you know, powerful, had super passes, and people kind of overlooked her because of her size. And Bird is a little bit more of a finesse player. She glides. She compared him to Gail Sayers. Sue Bird, Jim Brown, Jen Rosati. And Jim Rosati was also the National Player of the Year. That's right. 
Rebecca Lobo as well. Connecticut has had three. 57 to 33. Chancey getting slim for the Lady Balls. And Diana Crossing looks like she could be one. McDaniel leads in. She's only a sophomore. McDaniel hits the basket and a foul. Courtney McDaniel has earned the nickname Minute Maid because, as we mentioned, she comes in and the minutes that she gives, she makes things happen. There you see the little spin move. Tamika Williams trying to get some help and she gives herself to the free throw line. And we, again, we talked about one of the keys in this game, Tennessee getting to the free throw line. They have struggled. They've done a good job getting dribble penetration, getting inside the lane but they cannot knock those shots down. There was three fouls on Tamika Williams, and she sits down in favor of Ashley Battle, the redshirt freshman from Pittsburgh. Lawson on the bench, and Tennessee's shooting star has just been in a woeful slump that is really hurting the club right now. And Connecticut going with the smaller lineup. Go for one. Bird misses the three. Almost got the steal. McDivitt hustling down. Had that one blocked by Tarazi. And out of bounds to UConn. Sue Bird has such active hands. Her steals in this game probably are not what they should be. Even when she doesn't come up with a ball, she seems to create them. They've got her with two steals, exactly. Her hands are very active. She's always in the way. I've got her with five. Well, the staff have her with two. I like your staff. <laughs> she would too, I think. 12 minutes, 57 seconds to go in this ball game. Good hustle defense that time by McDaniel, but Connecticut keeps the ball. Bird out of that corner for three. 60 to 36, New Bird has 18. She is now the number seven all-time Connecticut scorer. Bird. Couldn't hit that one. Swin Cash offensive rebound. She couldn't hit it. And here comes Tasha Bucks the other way. See how Bird is reaching around? That time she got beat. But again, it's Tennessee beat her down the floor, but now they've got to come up and set it in their half-court game. I think Sue Bird's a little winded right now. You know, getting all those points can wear you out. Okay. You're that type of player. You don't want to come out. But blocked by Jones. Great defense. Ahead to Bird. He's got a two-on-one. Perfect pass. And then the foul on McDivitt. Too bad we don't have a stat on how many bounce passes have been in this game because I've watched a lot of basketball. I don't think I've seen that many in a long time. And how many bounce passes right on the money? Right. Coming up next, Sports Center. Reese Davis and John Anderson will be along. Jim Brown speaks from jail. Another Hoosiers upset and changing socks in Boston. How apropos, Jim Brown. Yeah. <laughs> it's on something of a uh, hunger strike. Read in the morning paper. Bird's going to get that breather. So is Asia Jones. Jessica Moore has checked in for UConn. Now, Ashley Battle has really gotten some good minutes, as, along with Jessica Moore, the two subs for Connecticut. They really make things happen. Sue Bird, the All-American and Player of the Year, has come through with 18 points tonight. So deadly from behind the arc. Antonio, UConn has a 26-point lead over Tennessee, and it's the All-American Sue Bird who is showing her versatility. She can take you off the bounce. She's got the beautiful pull-up shot. She can penetrate. We know about her passing prowess. She's just as good a floor leader as it gets. You know, if I were managing a company, I'd have her run it. I think she could manage better than Mark Cuban managed Dairy Queen. What do you think, Mike? I remember seeing that, and Mark Cuban really seemed to enjoy his time with Dairy Queen. Probably got free samples. That would, too. Well, there you see her number is four steals, five assists. She's wonderful. She is, and it's effortless. And I asked, you know, Oriama, before the game, I said, did you think that they'd be this good? And he said, no. When they were freshmen, he, they were not a good passing team. Not only with the ball, but even cutting to the basket. But 
He says the great players love the pass. It was one of the most heralded recruiting classes in uh, women's history. Tarazi with a miss on the free throw. And they have certainly turned out to be remarkable seniors. Marla Conlon is in for Connecticut. That ball knocked out of bounds off the Huskies. Sue Bird, when we saw her as a freshman, there, there is something about point guards you can usually tell if they're going to be special players. And it was pretty obvious that she was going to be. Same way with Tarazi. She played far better than uh, her freshman status would indicate. So does Jackson. Missed that shot, however. Followed by McDaniel won't go. Tennessee's still in there battling. Lawson just can't get on track. But, and finally, Tennessee puts an end to it. And a shy smile on the face of Tamika Williams that it took her that long to get the rebound. I had seen Sue Bird as a freshman when she came out to California to play UCLA. And she had only played eight games in and then tore the ACL. But even then, starting and just the difference she made, the presence out on the floor, just made everybody else better. The passing ability of everybody that Gino Oriana puts on the court is just remarkable. 64-36. This is just your typical Connecticut game right now. Just running away with a ball game. They lead the nation in scoring offense, averaging 87 and a half points a game. They lead the nation in scoring defense, giving up only 51 a game. They've only had five games at 100 points this season. And a lot of it has had to do with Gino Ariama kind of calling off the dog. Bird goes inside, and we've got a foul on Jackson. And that will be the third on the junior from Ufala, Alabama. You know, the Tennessee Lady Balls, 29 and 4 coming into this season, and when they lost their second game, people were saying, well, what's wrong with them? And you think, <laughs> they've only lost two games. Don't panic. Well, that's the standard that both of these coaches have established if... Uh, you know, if you're not undefeated, things are going bad for you. Well, it, it has. You're right. But but with this Tennessee team, I, I think that they are a very talented team. And we talked earlier in, in the first half about talent can take you only so far. It's the intangible that happens sure. with the chemistry. But they're so loaded with talent. I think that they've kind of struggled. And again, Pat Summit has had so many different lineups this season, trying to find out who's going to step up, who's going to fill a certain role. And I think it's taken these kids a long time. It's four losses. It's not something to shake a stick at. It's pretty proud of these. I think the one thing with all that talent, it is so difficult to play 10, 11, 12 kids and get the right combination during a game. But that's me saying that. And Pat Summon only has 788 wins more than I do. Well, and you look at Dean Smith. He did the platoon system. Tarazi. 68 to 39. How many women do you see take it one-handed like that, swinging it up in the air? She just makes it look so easy. Lawson coming back the other way, 934 left in this national semifinal. Oklahoma now knows that it will face undefeated Connecticut. And there's a blocking foul as Munoz went down the left side of the lane. Well, playing with these seniors, Diana Trossi says she cries every night that they're going to be gone next year. And it has improved her game because it makes her think. It makes her not only on the offensive end, which she has come in as a freshman here to Connecticut. A lot of people thought she could only shoot the three. She has become such a versatile player. People have criticized her defense, her rebounding. She makes things happen. She handles the ball like it's a peach. And if you have two guards who can pass that well and shoot that well, you put so much pressure on the defense. Their ball handling skills are unbelievable. And even at their size, both Oops. big guards. Munoz missed them both. 68 to 39, Bird calling out what she wants. 
Jones, who's had a big offensive night. Tarazi, good bounce pass, and an excellent pass to Jones. Tamika Williams should have gotten the assist on that. Now a travel the ball will go back over to UConn. They didn't get the finish, but the execution of that play, about four or five passes, about two or three of them at bounce pass. And when Michelle was talking to Sue Bird's mother, she talked about how hard they go in practice. And that is the play that you see they do all the time in practice. They are so aware of where the other player is supposed to be. And as soon as that bounce pass comes into the post, people are cutting that baseline and expecting that pass. And they get it. So Jones will go back to the free throw line. The senior from Piscataway, New Jersey. And let's look ahead a little bit. UConn will go for 39-0, a record set by Tennessee when they went undefeated and won a national championship. Oklahoma, the one thing standing in their way, and that's really an intriguing matchup. Well, starting off with the coaches. Sherry Coles and Gino Ariema were together this summer. And there you see the undefeated season, starting with Texas. Back in 1986, Jody Conrad's team with Cami Estridge and Clarissa Davis. The only championship she won there. That's right. That's right. But those two coaches are very close. And in fact, Gina was one of the people that proxy for Sherry Coles to get that job. Good call there, huh? <laughs> and then you've got a great matchup with Sue Bird and Stacey Dale. Size-wise, Connecticut looks pretty big, but we've seen what Oklahoma can do. They've got some pretty determined and intense players. They certainly, and they will be the sentimental favorites, certainly, based on what they have done in the last six years after the program was disbanded. Not just literally, but, or not just figuratively, but literally. Moore, good execution of a three-on-one fast break. Watson with the layup. And look at Pat Summit. Never say die. Let's go get him. And that was a mental lapse by Sue Bird. You know, Ari Ariama all over her as far as that pass in the middle, just telegraph. He doesn't like to see a lot of mistakes out there. Well, he doesn't get to see a lot of mistakes out there. Tarazi for three. When you're 38, no, how many can you make? 73 to 41. So this much anticipated rematch is turning out exactly the way most of the Connecticut games have turned out this year as a blowout. The Tennessee coming into this game, they felt confident. I mean, you, obviously, you have to every time you come in to play an opponent, no matter how well their numbers are. But the players believed in themselves. Obviously, their coach, Pat Summit, positive throughout the whole way. And a lot of people felt that Tennessee wouldn't make it to the Final Four. But you know what? You never give up on this team. You never count them out. No, we've seen you here too often to do that. But this is going to be a little bit too much. Tarazi left all alone. Moore, good-looking freshman point guard, pushing it up, had it knocked away. Tennessee got it back. A lot of contact and a late whistle as Snow hit the ground hard. And they're going to call Asia Jones for a hold. That'll be her fourth. Got a timeout on the court. 6.54 left. UConn on cruise control. And that's what's so surprising because they're a team that averages over 80 points a game. Which has to say a whole lot about the Connecticut defense, which has been brilliant all year long. Bingo. Lawson, line drive jumper and hit it. 74 47, five minutes to go. Oklahoma awaiting Connecticut in the Sunday night national championship game. Bird with a runner, couldn't hit it. Tarazi with a rebound and a fresh 30. 
Connecticut with three All-Americans this year, Kodak All-Americans, Sue Bird, Swin Cash, Diana Taurasi. And Tennessee did not have one. Taurasi a fadeaway, and if you look at the Associated Press All-American team, all five of them were either on the first, second, third team or honorable mention. All of them. That's unbelievable. But it also, to me, shows that the game has not changed. It's not about one player in the sense that it's about sharing. You're right. And if one player can make it a sharing situation, everybody contributes and, and they're going to all benefit. And it also says something about the unselfishness of the players, the attitude that the coaching staff has instilled in the players. And I think one of the special things they did all year long and when you're beating somebody by 40 points and there's still 10 minutes to go in the game Gino Oriema and his coaches came up with special things to work on for his players. They say, alright, in the next five minutes we want to do this, the next five minutes you want to do that. I think it's smart coaching and you also have to have a very accepting group of players to accept that idea rather than just take the time off. Let's check in with Michelle. Well, Mike, just to add to that, I got to sit down with all five starters yesterday, and they told me that Gino Oriama has a way of motivating each player differently because they all have different personalities. Tamika Williams says he dogs her, tells her she's terrible. Swin Cash says he'll pick one mistake with her and dwell on it. Diana Taurasi says he has to push every button with her because it takes so many buttons to get her going. And everyone agreed he's easier on Bird and Jones, and Asia Jones explained that to me, saying, well, it's because we never do anything wrong. <laughs> and Diana Taurasi, she just kind of laughs. They have a relationship that's like, she's the Eddie Haskell that he calls her. And, you know, to get back to your point, Mike, as far as what Connecticut does, you see the balance scoring tonight and over the season with all five of those players. But going in situational time during the game when they do have a big lead and to get their team focused and lots of times players will get in a mindset well okay we've got this big lead and they take themselves out of it sure but he has got them thinking all the time that this could happen at the end of the game we've got to be ready whether it be an out-of-bounds play a free throw situation two seconds left on the shot clock that type of thing and i think what's remarkable about that is that it has worked when most kids you tell them, you know, this is important to work on right now. I know we're up by 40 and we're going to win this game. Most people just turn the coach off and say, I'm going to go out and, you know, it's stat time. Tarasi brings it down, 74-50. And a foul is when Cash penetrated. Michelle Snow picked up the personal. That's her third. So this will obviously be a very disappointing end to Tennessee's season. They will finish 29-5. and five. Well, a very talented team that Pat Summit has coming back. They graduate Michelle Snow and Shalom Pillow, who has not played a lot this season. But... And a really wonderful recruiting class coming in as Connecticut. Gino Ariama, the coach of the year. They've got the player of the year in Sue Bird, and they got the high school player of the year coming in. And Ann Strothers from Colorado. You're on Tennessee's team next year. It's going to be tough just to get a uniform. <laughs> Tennessee, but, but Ann Strothers, the fifth high school player of the year for Gino Ariama. Nikisha Sales is the first. Jay Ralph, Tamika Williams, Diana Taurasi. You've got to recruit. It's the lifeblood of your team, and both these coaches have done a brilliant job of it. Snow, turnaround jump shot. Certainly no quit in Tennessee. They're battling right down to the bitter end. But bitter may be the operative word. Just look at how they spread the floor. Sue Bird takes her time. Sizes up how the defense is playing them. Cash. Missed with a left hand. Lori Moore is going to be a good one. Yes, she is. <laughs> nice scoop shot there. Not Got the quickness and the ball handling ability. She has seven points on the night. And a tough defensive player, too. That's really what has gotten her a lot of minutes this year, her ability to play defense. This one's knocked out of bounds. Tennessee will have it when we come back. But only 2.35 left. 
It's easy to notice things like worn wiper blades or a burned out headlight, but there are some other things you should check routinely to help keep your car safe, like your tires. One out of every four cars on the road has at least one underinflated tire. And underinflated tires are a leading cause of catastrophic blowouts. Learn more about what you can do to keep your vehicle safe and on the road with this booklet. It's free from Shell. Count on Shell. How do you integrate your new internet data centers with your legacy systems? Link up your remote locations with your VPN and make it all run smoothly so you're free to do what you really do best. Let the experts at AT&T tie it all together for you. Second annual ESPN Action Sports and Music Awards, fueled by Mountain Dew, April 16th at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Is there a problem, Davy? Well, Dad, there was only one Dew left. Tommy said it was his, I said it was mine, and we began to fight, and it was wrong. We're sorry. Boys, why don't you give me the Mountain Dew? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now let that be a lesson to you. What just happened here? We got hosed, Tommy. We got hosed. Oh, Davy. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call now, 800-553-4400. That's 800-553-4400 for the Wall Street Journal. Connecticut in command over Tennessee with 2.35 to go in the game. 75 to 54. The attendance tonight, 29,619. The most people ever to witness a women's college basketball game here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. And a big Connecticut contingency. They must have had 3,500 people at practice yesterday. They were huge. And they were loud people. I think Gino was a little impressed, too. He just kind of stopped and, of course, he had a couple opportunities to take some shots, and they were cheering for him, and he just, <laughs> and then, no, no, he wasn't doing it. He wasn't going to shoot. There is a uh, great sense of humor involved with that guy. He has brilliant one-liners. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done here, and we only have 2.27 to go in this game. Connecticut is led by as many as 32, and Sue Bird gets a standing ovation from the UConn fans and a standing ovation from a lot of other people in this crowd, regardless of who they're rooting for. National Player of the Year was brilliant again. 18 points, 5 assists, could have had more. And we had her with 4 steals early, may have been more than that by the time she was done. And she is our Nike player of the game, and she will finish with four steals. 50% from three-point range, four of eight. What's not to like, huh? <laughs> and she's one of those players. Tarazi is the same way. If uh, they were the star player on a mediocre team, they could probably score just about as much as they wanted. But I think in the end... You enjoy the chance to go 39-0 and win a national championship a little bit more. Well, you certainly do, and you look at that Tennessee team that they're being compared to with, they say, the three Meeks, Shamika Holtzclaw, right. Tamika Ketchings, and Tamika Randall, Kelly Jolly on that team, and they were a fun team to watch. Ashley Valley checks in for Connecticut. That ball was knocked out of bounds, and John Madry, our statistician, nearly got a souvenir or a broken nose, depending on how quick his hands were. <laughs> well, that Tennessee team was a high-powered defensive team. and well, weren't they? They were, but I don't think that they passed the ball as well as this Connecticut team does. Well, I haven't uh, covered women's basketball for that long, but uh, in the last eight years, just the best team I've seen. It's good. There's not too many weaknesses. And all year long, you know, I am says, well, we've got an Achilles heel. 
Nobody found it. Sweet turnaround jump shot by Swin Cash. Hope you'll join us tomorrow night as Tennessee will go for that magical, or Sunday night, rather. Tennessee will go for that magical 39th victory. And Connecticut and UConn will place that national championship. Game time is 8.30 in the East. And Oklahoma's men still in it. They'll play tomorrow night, but the Oklahoma women in the final. Got a timeout as Gino Oriema is going to go to the end of his bench. Tracy Marin will check in. Oklahoma and UConn in the finals. Easter Sunday night, we hope you enjoy us from the Alamo Dome. Oklahoma eliminated Duke earlier tonight in an impressive performance led by All-American Stacy Dales. And UConn just laid the wood to Connecticut tonight. Tarazi and Bird all up and down the lineups, All-American for the Connecticut Huskies, and they lead it 79 to 56. Could be a very intriguing game on Sunday night, especially if Oklahoma can get off to a quick start. They survived a slow start tonight against Duke. Well, you want to be aggressive, and Oklahoma came out, they hit some big shots. Duke made a run at them, and Rosin Ross was unbelievable as far as knocking two buckets down for her team to keep that lead. Well, Oklahoma will certainly have to bring its best game to compete with this one. They'll have to have their legs fresh also. They've got to be the aggressors. They've got to attack, but this defense that Connecticut puts on you is going to be tough to handle. Jalon Pillow is in the ball game for Tennessee, getting her name in the book before this one is over. And that's it. UConn has advanced to the national championship game with a 79-56 win over Tennessee. Most impressive again, the Huskies go to 38-0. Tennessee's season is over at 29-5. Final score, 79-56. Coming up next, Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For all of our crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Let's go to Connecticut by 14 points, but it was a four-point game well into the second half. So tonight, I don't think the Huskies will be overconfident. I don't think the Sooners will be intimidated. One thing we know for sure, we'll have a chance to see some great All-American guards. Well, both teams have wonderful supporting cast, but exactly right. It's time for the point guards to shine tonight. All-American super for Connecticut, who has done it all year long. She's unbelievable, especially in the tournament. She will knock down her threes. She'll go inside. She was 4 of 8 the other night against Tennessee from three-point range. She set her teammates up. She had five assists and four steals. Stacey Dales, the calming factor at 6-1. She creates a lot of problems with her size inside. So defensively, Connecticut does have to key in on her, but she also gets everybody involved, has to stay out of foul trouble. Will Oklahoma's improbable quest end with a national championship in its first appearance? Or will UConn put the finishing touches on a perfect record and reach 39 and 0? ESPN's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship is brought to you by Subaru. Visit us at Subaru.com to see our full line of all-wheel drive vehicles. Absolutely. And now let's take a look at how the weather's shaping up. Jay? Now it's time for our national anthem and pregame ceremonies. Here's public address announcer Agnes Green. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Alamo Dome for tonight's championship game of the 2002 NCAA Women's Final Four between the University of Oklahoma and the University of Connecticut. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the American flag that flew over the World Trade Center on September the 11th are Bryant Tui, Nat Harris, and Tom Moy of the Port Authority Police Department of New York and New Jersey.
assisting in the presentation of this symbol of unity and freedom are Dennis Meyer, Nim Kidd, Frank Wilborn, and Shane George of the San Antonio Fire Department, Shannon Feldman and Jamie Talbert from the University of Oklahoma, and Sue Bird and Swin Cash from the University of Connecticut. To honor America and those